From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Computer running slow. I'm waiting. Caught a virus? <laughs> Does your computer seem to have a life of its own? Malfunction. Need input. The computer guru is here. My God, you're here! Call in now. Now it's Mike Swanson, your computer guru. Hello and welcome to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology needs and treat you like a person in the process. 790-2040, if you'd like to be part of the show, that's 790-2040. And we, we, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Those Maybe, of you who are still alive after Black Friday, anyway. Yeah, if, if you survived Black Friday, and hope you, I hope you had a th- nice Thanksgiving, all of everyone. Drama-free. Mine was drama-free. I liked it. Yeah, it was a good Thanksgiving this year. Yeah. I cooked a bunch of stuff. Did you? Yeah. As did I. There was uh, plenty of cooking to be done. Although I tried to make deviled eggs and completely destroyed it. Really? Yeah, I, like disintegrated a bunch of eggs. <laughs> what? <laughs> I tried one of those internet life hacks that you see sometimes okay. on how to quickly deshell a bunch of eggs. Right. I mean, it definitely worked, just the eggs also disintegrated. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, so if you if you want to get some recipe tips from Rob, you can also call in seven nine zero twenty. Happy maybe, to give them to you. Or, Can't guarantee they'll work. Or maybe you can maybe you can give Rob uh, some tips on how not to destroy eggs. It's probably a good idea because the only time that you have to break eggs is you know when you're making omelets. So you know uh, you know fake news has been in the news a lot, but the Onion made me laugh today. Oh yeah, what they I, say? I opened up my news feed and it was like forty two million people dead after Black Friday. <laughs> I was just like, what? <laughs> It wasn't quite that high. No? No, I think the actual death count was uh, like nine people. I know that there were three in the United States. Yeah, this is worldwide. So three in the U.S., that's not too bad this year. I think yeah, but the, all three of them were over parking lot disputes. Vending machines claimed more lives last year than Black Friday. That might be a first. <sighs> it, it, first of all, how important is that parking spot, really? Apparently very important, like I mean, last stand important. Is it worth your life? That parking spot. Is the sale even worth it? Considering that they started shopping on Thanksgiving Day. You know, I actually like completely... Normally I'll do a very small amount of Black Friday shopping, and it's like after 3 or 4 o'clock on Friday. Right. I'll go to Walmart or whatever and buy like the $20 printer, you know, something like that. I completely boycotted it this year because of the fact that it wasn't Black Friday. It was Black Thanksgiving. Like they put... They started the deals on 5 o'clock on Thanksgiving. That's just wrong. It's obnoxious. I think it took pressure off the uh, Black Friday, though. Yeah, I can see that, too. But, like, at the same time, if I wanted to get one of those good deals, I had to pretty much forego Thanksgiving in order yeah. to do so. Right. It, at what point does it get to where we start? We celebrate every holiday that has any type of shopping on January 1st, right? And just get it all over for the year. Yep. Just, right. That's just... Then it really is going to be, like, 42 million people dead. It's going to be, like, the annual shopping purge. Right. The shopping games. Oh, we could put it on TV. All right, it could be like the you know running what? man. The more that you say this, the more I support it because I'm going to just stay home. No deal is worth that. Except for like the subscription fee to that channel. I'll pay that. Oh, yeah. The cable cable companies would probably make this happen. Let's do I it, just, guys. It, like a pay per view event. Yeah, it's $100 or whatever because that's what they charge now for pay per views, I think. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I don't have cable. Um, but uh, they. Yeah, that would that would definitely be interesting to watch. I, I'd watch it. I mean, it's a great way of dealing with just the, uh, the, the Darwinian way of dealing with things. All right? It's just like it, you signed up. You deserve this. All right? You're, you're going to go shopping on a day where everyone has to shop that same day. You know, uh, Tara mentioned last week, mentioned the running of the bulls. I'd right. be totally okay with them combining the two ideas. You know, and it's like if you don't get into Walmart fast enough, there's like a herd of bulls coming at you. That'd be booby trap some TVs or something. You know, make yeah. it interesting. <laughs> yeah, one in every hundred TVs is actually a landmine. <sighs> Blows up the die like at the, uh, if you steal the money from the bank. It's a four Claymore. This is uh, <laughs> <laughs> a four. <laughs> that, was, that was subtle. That was good. Too bad for you. <laughs> this show is surprisingly misanthropic today. You get high resolution nails. <laughs> Coming right, at Coming right you. at you in 3D. It's 3D. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys, though? Did you do any Black Friday shopping? You should uh, call in and let us know. I did not. Nope. nope. I went out for like an hour. And traffic was minimal. I went in, just went to Dillard's to pick up some shirts. In, yeah. out, done. I mean, 
That's not bad. I mean, I, I think everybody was at Walmart or Best Buy, so. Best Buy was full Yeah, when I went by. Best I mean, they full. had a really good deal this year, that 4K TV for 200 bucks. Right, and they had some other TVs that were $70 or something. It was some ridiculous. I mean, it didn't even pay for shipping to get it to the store type deal. I did uh, I did pick up a, uh, this was uh, this was before Black Friday, though, but I did pick up uh, another generic VR headset just for funsies. Oh, yeah? It was only 10 bucks. Yeah, well, I'm going to start working on my review. I have to go get that Daydream headset. Yeah, now that you got the Pixel, I'm jealous. So I have this, this Pixel phone now, which I've been testing out for the last week. It has a couple of things where I'm like, you know what? I don't like this. I can't believe that Google didn't do any type of promo event where they lined up a bunch of Pixels and then made an actual display out of them. That would have been interesting. You know, one Pixel per Pixel. Oh, you'd have to stand really far away. That'd be cool. It, it, it's kind of a cool phone. I, I kind of dig it. Uh, there's a, a couple of things that I'm not super pleased with at the moment. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like the hotspot stops working when I receive a call, and it shouldn't do that. Yeah, it, it's supposed it's, to. It's intermittent, though. And I'm trying to figure out what's different about those particular calls. How does the phone, uh, does, it, does it heat up a lot? Have you noticed it getting pretty hot? No. That's good. I mean, temperature-wise, it seems all right. The camera's amazing. My the only drawback that I have uh, so far, but I haven't even used it, so who am I to say, is the non-removable battery. I'm a big fan of the removable battery. Yeah, but you don't get nearly the battery life out of removables. It's true. I mean, you can have the spares. Yeah, but I could have like a backpack full of batteries. Right, because <laughs> because that's a good idea. <laughs> in the in the age of Samsung, that that makes it that's great. Yep, you just put a Note Seven right in the middle of those batteries. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> you might as well. Then you, Samsung needs to figure out how to just have a fire-powered phone, right? You just load it with a can of Sterno, all right? And then you, there you go. It's like Mad Max, the phone. <laughs> right. It's very steampunk. Right? You have to, like, crank it up first, like you have to, like a chainsaw? Yeah, a little, little two-stroke engine just to run the phone. The fondue phone. Right? <laughs> that would probably be safer than an actual Note 7. <laughs> It would be really noisy, though. It would be very hard to have those conversations. Every phone would be ye- or every conversation would be yelling. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, like, you mean, you mean like all old people on the phone? Anyway, yeah. They're, it's true. <laughs> they're just, what? I'm at the Walmarts! <sighs> all of them. Uh, everyone, right? It's, no, they could really, I, I, I guess maybe they think that it's like because they're not with visible. That they have to yell to make sure that you can be heard on the other end. I just think it's because they can't hear as well, so they think you also can't hear as well. Uh, let's ask an old person. Kent. <clears throat> <laughs> Last time I checked, we're about the same age. <laughs> yeah, but you act older than me because I'm, I'm, I'm stupid and young. Yeah. Hipster. Nice backpedaling there, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I, in fact, I don't even know how old you are. 58. Uh, you're... You're a little older than me. Okay. Little. Little? little? Smidgen? 42, man. Yeah, right. Seriously? Nah. Yeah. No, I thought, no, okay. All right. I guess he's trying to say I look really old. Well, I mean, I wasn't going to tell you, Mike, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hair thing, right? Do you, do, you, uh, do you scream into the phone? I try not to. <laughs> do you know anybody who does? Uh, yes, I do. Because I, they think that the other person's really far away. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because if you, call, if you call the relatives in Indiana, you better be yelling really, really loud. Just in case, you know, the, the line goes down, you'll still be able to hear them. That's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <sighs> okay. Let's take a moment to mention our sponsor, because, you know, we, we should probably change the subject. That's what we should probably do. That was perfection, Mike. Perfection Auto Works. You can visit their website at perfectionautoworks.com. Get your 26-point inspection for free, because free is our favorite price down here at Computer Guru. And you don't even have to, like, have a fight in the parking lot to get that deal. I, well, yeah, you might. I don't know. I wonder. His parking lot's very full. Cause, yeah, there's, like, a big waiting line all the time. Yeah. I wonder. Hey, Mike, are there any, like, uh, you know, if you're listening, are there are there any, like, fights breaking out in the parking lot because they want the oil change first? Right? They need that service right now. They can't wait. Not even a moment. Every day is Black Mechanics Day at at, uh, at Perfection Auto Works. Perfection Auto Works. Because, you know, free. Got to get it for free. I'd be interested to hear what Mike has to say on that. 
You should let us know. Yeah, give me a call, Mike. We'll be right back. Your computer guru, Mike Swanson, is here to help you tame that beast of a machine. Join the chat right now at guruShow.com or call in. This is the Computer Guru Show on KVOY, The Voice. Your technology guru, Mike Swanson, is answering all your questions one by one. Yes, science! So chime in with yours. The website is guruShow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is the Computer Guru Show. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show, 790-2040, if you want to be uh, be a part of this particular conversation about technology. 790-2040. So the Grinch may steal Christmas, is that what I hear? Yeah, well, people are saying that, uh, you know, now that Black Friday is over, the big looming shopping event is Cyber Monday. And it's getting a lot more attention than usual this year. Like, even people I know who have never even heard of Cyber Monday are like, hey, Rob, what's this thing Cyber Monday all about? You know, like that's what the smart people among us do instead of shopping on Black Friday. Right. So Cyber Monday, for those who don't know, is the online retail version of Black Friday. And yeah. And they basically put all their sales online on Monday at following Black Friday. It does take a little bit more work because not every single retailer does a Cyber Monday deal. So you might have to find some different websites, like use Amazon, for instance, or Newegg, things like that. Um, but people are worried that, you know, the big DDoS attacks that have happened this year were kind of a portend for the uh, destruction of Cyber Monday. So they're, they're saying that they think that the other attacks, the DDoS attacks, were just practice runs for Cyber Monday. Or that they at least show what's, you know, possible and that Cyber Monday could be completely disrupted by these types of attacks. I mean, it's a good point. Um, Amazon hosting accounts for a very large percentage of the internet. Um, so they host some very, very big websites. And just attacking those Amazon servers brought down like most of the internet earlier this year. Right, for certain portions of the United States, yeah, yeah. And, and Europe. Uh, I don't know that uh, that's sort of an end goal there. Yeah, I don't think it's an end goal. I mean, if the end goal is just trolling, then that might be a step along the way. Not to mention that now that something like this on a large scale has happened, I imagine that Amazon has, has spent some time sort of beefing up their yeah. I mean, defenses. I could I could totally see this as like a kind of a flexing of the muscle, like saying, "Look how we can actually hit your your paycheck, you know, your pocketbook." Because mm-hmm. if you take out Cyber Monday, like you're going to cost some of these retailers quite a bit of money. True, true. I I don't know that that would be. I, I don't know. I guess I look at the world in, in a weird way. You know, I'd be looking at it like, well, I guess nobody could buy anything on Monday because of DOS, DDoS attacks. Yeah, I mean, it's not like... How about Tuesday? <laughs> so, for the consumer, it's not going to matter, you know? Right. I mean, like, I, I'm definitely going to buy some stuff on Cyber Monday, for sure. But if I don't get to, it's not like I'm going to throw my knees to the ground and scream at the sky. Right. I don't know how much it would really affect the retailers either, though. I mean, it's not like... We're at, um, like, Best Buy or SWS or any of these other places, or brick-and-mortar stores, where they had to pay every employee to be there for that day. And with the cyber retailers, do you think that it really increases their cost a whole lot to do a Cyber Monday sale? Um, I mean, I know it can it, – it definitely has a little bit of an impact in terms of, like, the shipping department the next day. Right. You know? I mean, I, I used to work in a place that did stuff like that. And I can definitely tell you that after our big sales, the shipping department had to get beefed up a little bit. A lot of us even had to help out with that. But, I mean, it's nowhere near the scale of, like, deploying 10,000 Best Buy employees. Right. You know. To all applaud as you walk your way into the store <laughs> yeah, or being that. trampled. Not to mention that Amazon's warehouses are, like, almost completely automated anyway. Yeah, mostly robots. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. The robots are the robot revolution, man. It used to be that the humans had to walk around between the robots, but now the robots, like, travel between the humans. I'm thinking that if something were to happen where, like, Newegg or Am- the Amazon, you know, shopping sites were down for Monday. Right. They would just be like, okay, how about Tuesday now? Yeah, and I mean, as, as big as these DDoS attacks are, they cannot last forever. Right. Well, so. And the, the longer that they run, the easier it is to pinpoint them. Yep. So, the, go ahead. Sure, fine. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to – I don't I don't even think that – okay, there's definitely going to be some type of attack because there's 7 billion people in the world, you know, 
somebody's going to try to do something, but I don't think we're going to see like a massive coordinated attack. Or yeah, anything like that. I don't think so either. I mean, the only only real attacks that uh, you'd have to worry about are. Well, I guess they're not even that big of a deal. I mean, it's, DDoS <laughs> attacks are like the lowest common denominator for hacking anyway. It's like the, you end the threat by just turning off your monitor and like going outside for a little bit. <laughs> that seems to be how you deal with most online problems, though. Now, I mean, obviously, from the retailer's perspective, they're going to be you know pulling their hair out. But from the consumer side, it's not going to matter. Just like you said, buy stuff on Tuesday. Yep, buy it the next day. So th- that leads us to something about encryption. Right, as far as you know, hacking is always is followed up by the encryption debate. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit like closing the barn door after the horse already got out, but I understand why they do it. So we've had several conversations on this show about how encryption is a, in my opinion, a right to online presence. Right, if you're online, you should have the right to be encrypted to to fully hide. Uh, all of your personal data online, it, it, as much of it as possible. Anyway. I mean, some of it you have to give up to, to like you know, sign into the the store in order to purchase something. But I think that the idea that because you're connected to the internet means that your the machine that you're on should also be open to whomever, or the device that you're using, like your iPhone or something like that. Um, I think that's false. I think that you should be able to have complete control over what data you do or do not share with the world. Especially because the mindset seems to be, well, you know, if you don't like the idea that other people can see your data, just don't use the Internet. But, it, in, you know, day by day, that becomes not a valid argument anymore because it, it becomes impossible not to use the Internet. Right. It, it, the, every day that we, we move forward here is another day that uh, we are farther away from being able to do anything but the Internet to get things done. And as of right now, it kind of exists in a state of chaos on the Internet because each website represents a different company. And just like if you walk into a different business in real life, they might have a different set of rules for how you can behave inside of that business. It's kind of the same on the website. They set their rules for how they treat your data for the most part. But we really do need some type of a framework for laws in that regard. Because even if you make your own rules in your business, there's still some base ones that you have to abide by. Right, and and I'm not even talking about the retailers themselves. I'm talking about the idea that just because your computer is connected to the Internet, that that gives either governments or anyone else permission to access your computer and and read its contents or history um, simply by, by virtue of it being connected. Now, it does... It being connected means that, that it, the possibility is is there. But right now, you know, we have a legal system that basically says, well, you're connected to the Internet, which means that, yeah, the FBI can hack into your computer because you're connected to the Internet. That's because it happens all the time. And, I mean, that's behavior that we get outraged about if it happens in real life. You know, if you were just walking down the street and a cop just, like, grabbed you and threw you to the ground and started searching you for no reason, you would be furious. Right. And I, I think that the same types of thing needs to, you know, that there needs to be some sort of consideration for the digital aspects of your world as well, because that data is yours. It is something that should be protected by the Constitution. I mean, unfortunately, though, in a lot of cases, the governments that are supposed to be upholding these laws are the ones who are trying their best to destroy them. Yeah. Right now, the EU is there's there's five member states of the EU that are very interested in in saying that you, you know, there should be back doors into encryption, and it's I don't even know how to 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 fully express how dumb that is. Well, I mean, from their perspective, I totally get why they want that to to be the the case. But the sad thing is that they're able to convince so many people that they're right. So the, what makes it really dumb is the fact that if you were to create a back door, then the criminals would immediately know it. Right, they would immediately figure this back door out. They can't even stop people from from stealing music and movies online. What makes you think that? And, and, and that has just millions or billions of dollars thrown at it every year, to just to stop piracy. And they have have how much? How much do you think that they've done that? Not, None. Not like the opposite. It's increased. They brought awareness to the fact that you can get stuff for free on the internet. Okay, so if if you think that. A backdoor can be built into some type of uh, of device, a, a global key that would allow any law enforcement agency access to your device. 
How long do you think that would remain a secret? And to think that this comes in the this is the same week this EU story where the US is saying that there's not actually a shortage of cybersecurity skill in the United States. So what's that one about? It's basically they're just because we've heard for a long time now that the US is not outputting as many programmers and developers as it should be to keep up with the rest of the world. Uh, well, various government agencies have basically just said, that's not true. We've got enough. We're, we're doing great. Right. I mean, come on. Like, this is obviously not true. If that was the case, then we wouldn't be reading, you know, four million accounts hacked and just be like, yeah, another news day. Yeah, because there there was a a, a recent dump, 4.7 million usernames and passwords dumped on the on the Internet uh, for email accounts that have been hacked. Um or accounts that have been hacked, and you can search uh, to see if your email address is attached to one of those accounts. Um, the the website you can go to is have I been pwned or p w n e d dot com. So have I been p w n e d dot com, and you can search there to see if your email address is in one of the hacked accounts. I mean, it probably is. It's very very likely. I, I just given that there's even a website that needs to exist like that, it, it's incredible to me that any country could say that they have enough cybersecurity professionals. Yeah, it, it, and the sad part is, is that there's a certain amount of, um, you know, it's pretty avoidable. And and even if it, you do end up on one of these lists, if you're if you're following proper password procedures, right, where you're changing your password fairly often with fairly complicated passwords then it doesn't matter if you're on this list. Another thing that you can do is you could just not have your email hosted by one of the major providers. Yeah, well, that's not just the mail, though. This is accounts that you've used that email address for. Right. So if, uh, you know, let's say, for instance, you have an account over at, like, LogMeIn, and, and they get hacked, um, then then your email address and password is out there. And especially if you use the same password for multiple accounts with that associated email address, and that puts you at, at greater risk. I think uh, Kent over here just found out something. <laughs> yeah, he's, he says uh, he is on two breach sites. So there you go. you got to go change your passwords, man. Probably a bad thing, right? <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the interpretation from the guru and Rob. <laughs> Honestly, though, like Mike said, the best way to avoid this is to just rotate your passwords frequently. Yep, change your passwords. Stop using the same passwords for multiple sites. Get into the habit of doing it minimum once a month. Get, go go to lastpass.com and download the password manager. And then after you've signed up and you've put everything in there, run its little security test. And it will tell you where you've screwed up. All right. The other thing is that you should enable two-factor authentication for any service that you can. Yep. Any, any service that allows for two-factor authentication, the one where you try to sign in and it sends you either a text message or an email or something to validate that, preferably text message, by the way, um, that, that's better. I have to say that Steam has perhaps the best two-factor I've ever seen. Because it's more than two. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't just uh, it doesn't send you a text message. It gives you a notification if you've got the Steam app installed. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I pull my phone out, I already have the code on my screen. I don't even have to unlock it. That's pretty nice. So they've kind of negated the the whole, like, Ugh, now i got to wait for the text message and i got to go to it and all that. The reason why people don't do it uh, you just have their little companion app, and then it gives you the, the yeah. code. Who else is pretty good at that is Blizzard? Well, it, Steam actually modeled theirs after Blizzard. It, it works in the same way as those little mobile... Uh, the authenticators? Yeah. The the Steam code actually rotates like every 10 seconds. Right, and, and that's an RSA code. And then similar, Facebook is doing the same thing these days. So if you try to sign in on a device that is unrecognized, um, then it's going to you're going to need to generate one of these codes in order to get in. That's, I mean, you can effectively negate hacking your account if you do that. It's, it's virtually impossible. Right, unless somebody breaks the back end, right? If they're, if they're breaking the database and, and just extracting that information straight out of the database, you wouldn't have to worry about anyone logging in as you on one of these services. Yeah, and I mean, especially if they backdoor it that way, it's almost security through obscurity at that point. Like, you're probably not the target. All right, so but still, change your passwords, people. Get all over it. You know what you should do? You should give yourself an early Christmas gift and have a new password. Just give it to yourself. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Yeah, it's free. All right? You don't even have to wrap it. Just, just give yourself a new password. The gift of peace of mind. There you go.
I guess we're going to take a break right now. That's what we're going to do. 790-2040 if you'd like to be part of the show. We'll be right back. Whether you're dealing with hardware installation or, heaven forbid, a virus, Mike Swanson is answering all your questions one by one. So call in or chat in with yours. The website, gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is the Computer Guru Show on AM 1030 KVO. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at gurushow.com. This is a Computer Guru Show on KVOI, The Voice. You know how much we enjoy talking about technology and space and stuff? I especially like the space stuff. Yeah, especially, you know, you didn't have a chance to comment because you weren't here last week about the EM drive. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I did, uh, at one point I wrote an article basically just saying, like, well, I was wrong about that. But I still, like, in the back of my mind, I'm just like, there's no way. That's way too cool to happen in this universe. Oh, man, peer-reviewed. You know, I, I tend to, like, I, I really don't like to get overexcited about things and then be proven wrong, you know? Which is why I always seem like the cynic, is because I'm playing it safe. I'm like, there's no way that's going to happen. That would be way too cool. Yeah, at what point does being the, the cynic be the, you know, you being the pessimist? I'd like to say that I'm a realist, really? you know? And, I mean, so far, nothing anywhere near as cool as the EM drive has ever happened in our universe. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What that about, we know of. What about the... The lasers that measure the gravitational wave of black holes. That is pretty cool, but it doesn't get us to Mars in 70 days. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I mean, what were they estimating the, the round trip was before? It was like... It's eight months each way. Right. So, yeah, getting there in 70 days. That's that's insane. It's consider- and, and if they build a larger one, they can go faster. That, yeah, I mean, we're talking a real percentage of the speed of light with this drive if it works. That's crazy. That's pretty fancy. Considering that the previous, like, best estimated way to get to the next star in a reasonable amount of time was to just explode nuclear bombs behind the ship. You know, this seems like a a much better way to do it. (laughs) I guess this is slightly less violent. I mean, don't get me wrong, the nuke thing is pretty cool, but... They should have a nuclear-powered microwave. You know, just giant ones. Yeah, with this EM drive, could you, like, throw a burrito in there? (laughs) <laughs> I'm wondering. We'll have to ask Taco Bell. It'll be nice and crispy by the time you get to Mars. Because isn't that how they, uh, I don't know, do they microwave stuff? Probably. Yeah, I think all the fast food places microwave stuff now. Yeah, but uh, but anyway, although I am still skeptical, as I always will be until I actually see it happen, you know, I think it's really cool and I hope that I'm wrong on it. I think you're wrong. I mean, especially I mean, now that it's peer-reviewed. If I could, I mean, I, I agree. It's looking like I was definitely wrong about it. But until I see that thing strapped to a ship and then it gets to Mars in 70 days, I'm just going to be like, no way. How about if it, you know, because how long does it take to get to the moon? I mean, it takes a while. Uh, what, what was it, like six days, I think? Something like that? Yeah, it's, it's a while. I think it's at least a week. So we're talking like an hour or two, probably. Right, if we can get to the moon, you know, in, in a reasonable amount of time, let's say... Less than what it would take to uh, use traditional fuel sources. That would be an interesting test. See, like, I'm I'm so cynical about this kind of thing that I get depressed when I watch sci-fi movies because I'm just like, that's never going to happen. You know? <laughs> It'll never actually happen. So these things are all about the optimism of the future? Yeah, like, I, you know, they always say that you're, like, born too late to explore the Earth and too early to explore the universe. Right. I mean, with the EM drive, like, we, I might get to see a little tiny bit of it in my lifetime. You might? But we might have to settle for Cassini crashing into Saturn. That's pretty cool, though, too. Yeah, Cassini is about to take its death dive into Saturn. It's, it's on its way. Have you seen uh, Interstellar? I have. You know when they're going to jettison the robot into the black hole so that he can send back some data? Uh, yes. That's pretty much what Cassini's going to do. So they're going to just crash it into the planet? Yeah, so it can collect some data about Saturn. Now, will we actually get any of that data? I, I hope so. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, because we didn't get any from the one that crashed into Mars. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. I mean, we did get some, if you think about it, we did get some data. Like, don't do it that way again. <laughs> the, the data was, yeah, don't do that. No, no, it's dangerous. You're not going to get anything useful out of crashing millions of dollars into the planet. So there was a glitch on uh, one of the, the former Mars probes 
and uh, they couldn't find it. Do you remember the? Yeah, I mean, everybody was like, "It's probably, it probably got destroyed," you know. But they were just saying, "We we don't know that for sure, so let's try to be hopeful." No, right? They destroyed. thought that potentially that it landed and just died, and no, it didn't. It uh, it did not land. I mean, it it did, but <laughs> just not safely. <laughs> yeah, not at all. I would say that it, the word to use is impacted. <laughs> right. It. it uh, it, it, it stopped at the planet's surface, mostly. <laughs> you could say that that probe uh, left its mark on Mars, though. It, it did, yeah. Um, I'm always sad when I see stuff like this because uh, failures tend to like sway public opinion the wrong way. You know, people are like, "Well, we wasted all that money." Clearly, clearly, we shouldn't be doing this anymore. Like, Do you even understand how crazy it is that there's like a human-built robot on Mars right now, even if it's in a molten chunk of? Debris. I think that that's less amazing than the fact that people believe that the Earth is flat. Like, it, it, I mean, it's a small percentage, but still, how does anyone? Well, you know, Mike, we only started getting pictures of the Earth as a globe right after fisheye lenses came out. <sighs> Coincidence? <laughs> I think not. <laughs> yeah, I, the flat Earthers blow my mind. It's great. It's, I, how? You know, how? I think YouTube thinks that I'm a flat Earther because I love, I love watching their videos. I love it. There's so much energy and expended. In I'm like, if whole... you just applied this a little bit the other way, you would like could work at NASA. <laughs> Rather than than trying to debunk, I mean, they have all these really crazy theories about how it's a conspiracy that that the government keeps us thinking that the world is round. When it really... what's the goal? What is the end goal? Right. And how many how many people would it take to keep that secret? Right. I mean, I mean, considering you can debunk this in your backyard, you know, with about 200 bucks, <laughs> all you need is a telescope. You could do it with a rocket and a GoPro. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, I personally would love a TV show where a, a person who like just pick the number one flat earther, whoever they say is the most credible flat earther and just send them up to the ISS. I will gladly support that Kickstarter campaign. That would be awesome. I yeah, I would I just want to see the reaction. He'd be like, It's underground. This is an under I was knocked out. This is an underground <laughs> facility. This is where they filmed the moon landing. Isn't it amazing how much energy gets put into uh the resistance of changing a mind? Right? Rather than just being like, I've been provi- I've been presented evidence. I've been presented compelling evidence that shows me that I have been wrong. And rather than admitting that they are wrong. And this is true for most of us, right? If we get set in our ways, if we have a strongly held belief and we say, this is this is the belief that I have, does it really matter how much evidence that you present someone? Will they change their mind? I mean, I tend to err on the side of, like, there's not a giant global conspiracy for anything, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> And that's part of the whole, the same skepticism that makes me not want to believe in the EM drive, because I'm just like, it'd be way too cool if the Illuminati was actually real. That'd be hilarious if that was the, the case. Yeah, or that uh, the, the Egyptian technology was that of, of, aliens, of yeah. aliens. That'd be right. way too cool, so obviously it's not the case. That's kind of how I judge stories like this. I'm like, well, would it be like amazingly awesome if it was true? Yeah, okay, probably not then. Because that cool <laughs> stuff doesn't actually happen. It's so. not a bad way to look at it, man. Not a bad way. Let's go ahead and take a break, Ken. Let's uh, let's figure out what what sort of of global conspiracy we're going to talk about next on the Computer Guru Show. Seven nine zero twenty forty. We'll be right back. Computer troubles? Need some advice? Call in now. Mike Swanson will be back after these messages. The Computer Guru Show, AM 1030, KBOY, The Voice. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at gurushow.com. This is the Computer Guru Show. All right, Kent, we got a question for you over here. How how fast do you think your computer is, man? 
Do you know how to measure the speed of computers? You know, sort of a baseline measurement. I do not. They do something no, called do that. they measure flops or floating point operations per second. So it's, it's hmm. basically how many large mathematical equations can be um, basically done per second. Now, your average high-end computer, like an i7, does something around seven gigaflops. So I'm at like... Or megaflops, I'm sorry, megaflops. I'm at like not even one flop, because it would take me a little bit to, to even conceptualize a large mathematical problem. All right, so, uh, so seven megaflops. Is that, what, is that what it is? Let me go back to this, because I want to make sure I have the right numbers here. Um, because when we start getting... It's, it's gigaflops. So seven gigaflops. That's your average... Home machine? That's a high-end home machine. So we're talking 7,000 computations a second. Um, that would be megaflops. So gigaflops is... Tens of thousands. Right. So it's, uh, a million. Seven million? Seven million transactions per second. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like I said, you know, I'm, a, I'm at about one flop, so you're going to have to give me a moment here. So we've got a pretty big number here already at seven gigaflops. So seven million transactions or mathematical equations per second, and that's that's pretty quick. That's, that's I can't imagine doing that many mathematical equations in my lifetime, much less per second. Um, and so the only reason we're talking about this is that uh, that. Japan says that they want to spend some money to have the world's fastest supercomputer ever. And and they measure that. They gave us a measurement. They say that they would like to see a uh, a number of, let's see, let me get back to this number here. How, how, many, uh, how many flops do you think would be really fast? Well, if your average home machine is at, you know, gigaflops. Right. So a supercomputer could be like a server farm of machines. So I mean teraflops. Maybe yeah. we're getting up to the higher. Yeah, teraflops would, would be a nice start. Is that a prehistoric animal? Or? <laughs> yeah, the majestic teraflop. Yeah. So you have you know you have you have kilo and then uh, mega, and then giga, and then tera. And, and you're saying in the, in the teras? I would think the high, you know. The high end of that, yeah. Yeah, so, um, all right, so what's after Terra? Well, in terms of bytes, we've got petabytes. All right, that's that's getting closer. I think the entire size of the Internet is like 10 petabytes or something. Right, Maybe so. Xeno something, Xenobyte or something? And then uh, Yoda bytes after Yoda. that. Oh. Yoda. And uh, it's, so, yeah, Japan wants 130 petaflops. All right, so that's, it's... 10 to the ninth. That's insane. Right. Times 130? Yeah. That's a, that's a lot. It's a huge, huge number. Well, we're seeing here that uh, in 2011, Fujitsu's K computer uh, topped out at 10.5 petaflops. So we're talking about a factor of 10 times that fast. Right. And right now, the, the fastest uh, supercomputer that's out there right now um, has a benchmark of 93 um, and there's a couple of ones that made uh, um, that are U.S. that are classified ones that are estimated to run at somewhere around 165. Um, oh, so things that don't really factor into this anyway. Right, things that are at Area 51 that theoretically uh, may exist or may not. Who knows? Um, but but as far as the fastest public or fastest one that we know about. So is this just a uh you know, just to have it, or do they have a plan in mind? Maybe they're going to try to stop. Uh, they're, they're basically, they're trying to do an AI bridge, right? They want to basically fuse computer AI with human intelligence. I say get on that. That'd be pretty sweet. I liked The Matrix. <laughs> the Matrix was a good movie. It's a documentary. Uh, well, that also brings up the conversation of, well, should we be afraid of AI? Um, I... I this is one area where I'm actually maybe a little bit of an optimist. I think that we should be afraid of AI, but I think we should do it anyway. I don't think we should let our fears stop us. Okay. Why? Because the the risk-to-reward ratio is so great. I mean, you know, an AI could in moments, like, just solve all of the disease problems and world hunger problems. Yeah, but in every movie that we're 
or fiction that you see that. It's like, can you please solve this problem for you? And the problem always ends up being humans. Well, I mean, I, I am a misanthrope, so it's a win-win for me. Right. So the computer's just like, I finally figured out how to make world peace and all humans. Did you see that terrible Johnny Depp movie about AI that came out recently? Transcendence. Was it that bad? It was. It would have been a good TV show. But, the, like, movies just move too fast, you know? They can't get enough story in there. Right. I don't know. That's one of the reasons I love, like, the, the Netflix series or... That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or any of these uh, sort of off... Oh, was it, uh, what was that movie you watched? The Stephen King one. Um, the Time Travel. Oh, 11-22-63. Right. It's a so, great series. That, that seemed like that was pretty cool, all right? Being able to tell the story that... Basically, they should, we should make it so that... If you're going to make a book into a movie, it's got to be a series. All right, you got to send that to Netflix or Hulu or this is why, Amazon or something. Like I'm just going to be really sad around February or March because they're turning my favorite book series into a movie and it's going to be garbage. Which one is that? The Dark Tower. That's a good book. Ah, but the movie is looking terrible already. I'm I'm sorry. It's mostly because it has Matthew McConaughey in it. Now. He was all right in Interstellar. And that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, the only things I've ever seen him in that were any – I have to admit, the cop movie he was in was pretty good. Um, or the series. What was that? Oh, uh, True Detective. True Detective. Yeah. There, that was pretty good. You know, Interstellar's tagline could have been like, yeah, it's got Matthew McConaughey in it, but just watch it anyway. That could have been <laughs> – like, this, this movie's still all right. It's all good right, in right. spite of the main character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a moment to mention our sponsor again because they sponsored the first hour. That would be – Perfection Auto Works. Go to visit their website, perfectionautoworks.com. Also, we want to take a moment to mention our Patreon sponsors. Uh, we're very, very thankful for the, uh, for the, you know, the, the donations that you give to help keep us on the air. Yeah, and we're going to have some news soon about things that we're actually going to be doing. Um, one thing that we mentioned on the show already that you guys probably think we're not going to do, but I promise you it will happen. Right. We're going to destroy some Furbies. I'm, I will make that happen. Right, and now that I can do high speed at 240 frames a second, yeah, it's going to be in slow motion. That's kind of what we were waiting for. All right, we're gonna we're gonna blow up some Furbies or run them over. We're gonna anyway. find out what it takes to get a fire department response. <laughs> you can also support us on Patreon. You can go to GuruShow.com/slash/Patreon. Uh, just like uh, the Desert Pro commercial cleaners, they uh, are do a wonderful job of cleaning our locations, and we appreciate them. We'll be back right after these messages with more of the Computer Guru Show. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Computer running slow? I'm waiting. Caught a virus? <laughs> Does your computer seem to have a life of its own? Malfunction. Need input. The computer guru is here. My God, you're here! Call in now. Now it's Mike Swanson, your computer guru. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike here to deal with your technology issues and treat you like a person in the process. 790-2040 if you'd like to have your questions answered on air. Otherwise, you can send us an email, radio at azcomputerguru.com. Or if you just want to watch the show later, go to YouTube because we have a whole bunch of episodes on YouTube. Yeah, and we're even doing a thing where we cut out certain conversations that we have here and put them up as their own video in case you don't have two hours. Yeah, you want some bite-sized conversations. There I mean, you if go. you don't listen to the whole show, you're not really a fan, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we were playing with the uh, the Google Assistant during the break. That was it's pretty interesting. It's getting there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's not quite where. Uh, what was the uh, the service that they were beta I think last year was a Hound. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. But I mean, in some ways, it surpasses it already. The uh, the inflection thing really blew my mind just now. Yeah, it, you can ask the assistant to read you a poem, and I thought that that was interesting because. You know, poems definitely have inflection and pauses, and you know, there's there's a, a rhythm to them, and uh, the artificial voice sounds very, very good reading those. It, it actually knows where to inflect and where to pause. It's it's incredible. I mean, considering that a couple of years ago, AI was like Cleverbot, you know? Right. This is it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, it's not quite where it needs to be yet, but um, uh, it's it's a step in the right direction. I actually, uh, I I kind of sat down one day and was like, all right, I'm going to start using the Google Assistant, and I'm going to see how much I can incorporate it into my life. 
And in some cases, I really, really enjoy it. Um, for instance, when I'm playing video games, I like to have my phone unlocked because I can ask it to look things up so that I don't have to take my hands away from the, the game. Right. Um, I use it at work to set my meetings for me and also to record certain meetings. Very nice. Things like that. Um, it tells me if I've got alerts coming up. I also have it set up to where it puts my phone in the silent right before I walk into something like the show or the meeting. That's that's pretty all right. So, so we got a clarification from the assistant on how long it takes to get to the moon. Huh. Well, let's do it again. Let's, let's yeah, ask we'll, it. Do it live. This will yeah, be fun. we'll do this live. We'll, we'll see if this will pick this up. Uh, let, me, let me start the assistant. How long does it take to get to the moon? About three days. According to Space.com, Apollo missions took about three days to reach the moon. So, yeah, there you go. So six days round trip. I was close. Yeah, so it's uh, it gives you very – and you can ask it follow-up questions, which is kind of nice. Um, so y- you can you can then say, well, because we, we talked about Apollo 11, how fast did the Apollo 11 travel? About seven miles per second. According to UCSB Science Line, University of California, Santa Barbara, the speed needed for Apollo 11 to break free of the Earth's gravitational field was about seven miles per second. Apollo 10, a spaceship that only orbited the moon in 1969, holds the record for the highest speed attained by a manned vehicle with 11.08 kilometers per second. That's pretty All right. quick. Turns out that that's 24,791 miles per hour. It's pretty fast. It's pretty quick. So, yeah, the the assistant is pretty interesting. Yeah, and that was Mike actually holding his phone up to the microphone as well. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it does it does a pretty decent job of answering questions. We were, we were testing with two-part questions, but we didn't have enough time to, to really get into that. Yeah, so phrasing, like saying, like, how far away is the moon and how long does it take to get there? It did a pretty good job of figuring out what we meant and giving us two pieces of information. Right. It wasn't quite exactly what I was yeah. looking for. The answer wasn't as succinct as I would have liked. That, uh, the Hound demo, you could ask it like 12 questions in a row, and it would answer them all. Right. It would find a way to tie all those together and give you an interesting, well, if not overly verbose I would. It would not <laughs> surprise me if you know this really is just a beta for, I mean, that's kind of what they have to do. They're beta testing the eventual AI that Google hopes to create. And as we use it, they're getting more data on how to improve it and stuff like that. So in a year, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a much better version. Right. It already does some very cool things. I've used it uh, while driving, you know, to, uh, you know, because it's voice commanded, so I can just tell the phone. Um, or I want to make sure it doesn't answer right now. <laughs> I could just say, okay, Google. And Oh, it did it. Um, the, and then say, I, w- I would like you to send a text message to whomever. Yeah, I actually use the voice commands to have text message conversations all the time. And it's pretty cool. Um, now, Alexa, the Amazon AI, can uh, tie into their Kindle service, and it can actually read audio, or read books to you as if they were audio books. So if they've got some form of this inflection thing, that would make it so much better. Because that's the reason why I don't, I don't use that, is because it sounds really weird to have a robot voice reading to you. Right. But uh, the Google one sounds pretty good. I'll have to check on the next break to see if I can get it to read something to me yeah. other than a poem. Like, you know, can you read a book? Yeah, they're supposed to be doing these, like, news briefing things with the Pixel where it'll read, almost in a podcast format, it'll read to you, like, the headlines and a little bit about the story. So you'll have to figure out how to set that up. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I've only been messing with this thing for about a week. And, uh, of course, you know, life and holidays uh, it hasn't given me a whole lot of time to practice with it. But uh, we'll, uh, more information coming soon. Well, let's go ahead and take a call and talk to John. Hey, John, how are you? Okay, pretty good. I got a question for you. That uh, anniversary update of Windows 10, uh-huh. have they updated it? Every time it installed on my computer, my desktop, it was just about rendering it useless. And I'd have to go back and re-image it. I mean, everything, it would lock up, it would freeze, it would take forever to load or boot up. But as soon as I re-image it and go back to where that updates so I can do something with the computer, it works fine. But then the Windows the following week would update it and put that 1607 Windows uh version back on it and I'd have the same problem and I finally just disabled my my update so it has to prompt me to download them and install them right so the 
the 1600 series updates are old now, so because we're, we're in the mid 1700 update now. And it sounds to me like maybe one of the updates that you've downloaded already is corrupt. Um, so that I would probably go about resetting Windows Update so that it uh, it basically deletes all the ones you've already downloaded and downloads new ones. What's the method that you're using to re-image? How are you going back? Well, to re-image it, I'm going back to my uh, the copy of Windows when I set up my computer and, and, and cloned the image image right. of my hard drive. Right, so you're going back to a clone, which already has stuff to down, already downloaded on it, I imagine. Right. Um, so I would just reset the updates. Now, but it ever it keeps prompting me every time for Windows update 1607, Windows version, which I guess was the new version. Right. That's the, the anniversary update. The anniversary like I'm saying, it you should be. If you reset your updates, it'll skip the 1607 and go straight to the 1700s. So you need to get, uh, get rid of the ones that are already downloaded because it won't continue. It won't even try to get the newer ones as long as those older ones exist in the downloads folder. Okay, how do I reset that? So the manual way to do it is that you would go in and stop the Windows Update service. And inside your Windows folder on the computer, there is a software distribution folder. And inside there is a downloads folder, and that's where all the, the downloaded updates live. So you go stop Windows Updates, delete that folder, and then restart Windows Updates or restart the computer, and then it will download the new updates. Okay, I'll give that a try then. But uh, it, it changed my it, it changed my desktop around and gave it kind of a new look a little bit, you know, on everything. Right. And it just lock up, freeze, take forever to load. I just could take me half an hour just to open a folder, you know. Right. There are definitely some problems with the initial rollout of the anniversary update. So okay. the folder you're looking for is C, Windows, Software, Dis- Software Distribution, Downloads. And you want to empty that Downloads folder. So either delete the Downloads folder itself or just the contents therein and then restart the the uh, Windows Update service. Okay. Thank you, now. Give it a shot, John. Let me know how it goes. All right. All the ones that I've had problems with so far, that has solved the problem. So if you, if you happen, to have, happen to have update problems with the anniversary update, that's how you'll, you can get rid of those. And it's it works pretty well, I think, in my opinion. What are you, look, what are you working on over there? I'm doing some chatting with somebody in the chat. They're just They're following up, actually, about our... Uh, the break-in that we had. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, here's the thing, thieves, if you happen to be listening. If you're a thief and you happen to be listening, I just want you to, to recognize that you are messing with somebody that has the technical ability and uh, lately the drive to create a human-sized bug zapper. You know, because I can. I did a lot of research uh, this last week about, you know, booby trap laws for inside of an office and things like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, they pretty much thought of all of it. Did they think of the human-sized bug zapper? I think that constitutes a booby trap. I mean, it's just for bugs. Maybe we could just electrify the entire perimeter of our building. I should be able to define bugs as... Like thieves do not enter? Right. And then they'll enter anyway because they're thieves? Right. And that's what they do? Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break. And then, because we want to stay on the clock. we gotta we got to get the clock right, man. So give us a call, 790-2040. We'll be right back after these messages. Your computer guru, Mike Swanson, is here to help you tame that beast of a machine. Join the chat right now at gurushow.com or call in. This is the Computer Guru Show on KVO. So one of the highly anticipated Black Friday things was the Apple AirPods which is the the response to not having a headphone jack on your new Apple iPhone. 
Yeah, so every, I mean, Bluetooth headphones are kind of a big deal right now. You see them everywhere, especially those ones with the little neck thing. Right, where uh, the battery goes. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the AirPods are essentially just the earbud part, and they don't even have a wire connecting them. And how much do they cost? Because um, I'm anticipating them being lost immediately. $159 is what they said they would cost at launch, but it announced it, they just announced a delay. A delay. Yeah. They said, oh, man, I'm going to try not to laugh as I read this, okay? <laughs> okay? They said, we don't believe in shipping a product before it's ready, and we need a little bit more time before our AirPods are ready for our customers. Okay, then. I think the, you know, the litany of problems that the iPhones have had every single iteration begs to differ. But <laughs> Well, if that's the case, all products ever. But, uh, yeah. Well, actually, I, I'm sorry. I was wrong because they didn't have problems. We were just holding them wrong. That's right. And, and when you lose your iPods, your AirPods, sorry, when you lose your AirPods, uh, it's going to be because you were wearing them wrong. I will say, though, that, like, 60% of the times that my earbuds come flying out of my ears, it's because the cable got hooked on something. Right. Which is the most, like, jarring thing to have happen to you ever. Right. You think you'd learn. Yeah, but it never, <laughs> it just don't. <laughs> I'm I'm wondering how many we're going to see that are going to just be lost. Right? I, I, essentially, like eighty dollars a pop per per earbud. You know, that's that's pretty expensive. I don't know. And there, it's funny because I thought there were going to be some type of design that would allow them to stay in your ear. Nope, it's just wireless Apple. Maybe earbuds. they're barbed. You put them in, you can't get them out. No, because then how are you going to install the the new update? You know, for another two hundred dollars. <laughs> They're going to be. You have to go down to your Apple Surgery Center <laughs> instead of the Genius Bar. They they'll then have the plastic surgery bar. It's the, yeah, it's the Genius Surgery Table. That's right. What were you going to say? Uh, you're telling me to answer the phone is what you're saying. All right, fine. <laughs> Let's talk to Steve. Hello, Steve. How are you? I'm I'm doing good. Now I'm wondering. Um, as far as I can remember, I have not. Oh, I have Windows Seven. I have not received any prompt to upgrade to Windows Ten. And my computer just runs as slow as ever. Um, but I was wondering, when is there a time when I will have to go to 10? Or if they don't automatically give it to me, can I just stay at 7? You can stay at 7 because you missed the free upgrade already. Oh, okay. Um, the free upgrade ended uh, end of August? Yeah, it was a while ago. So. Oh, okay. Well, they never even told me about it. You, you know, I, I was waiting for it to come up because I'd heard you guys mention it. But I never saw any prompt or anything. Do you use any of the accessibility features in Windows? No. It sounds to me like your Windows updates were probably off already in Windows 7, and in which case you wouldn't have gotten the Windows 10 upgrade. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy where I am. Yeah, and you, you'll be there until that machine dies, and then uh, once you replace that machine, you will you will then be in, the, in 10. Honestly, as somebody who was like a diehard against Windows 10, it's not that bad. Maybe I could sell it to a collector. <laughs> not quite. Not not quite yet. Okay, uh, but you. if you do decide to upgrade, you know, we're doing our Christmas giveaway. So oh. any, any Windows 7 machine or newer, uh, we are rehabbing them and giving them away to needy families, so that, to those that are nominated by you, the listener. Oh, yes. So, yeah, well, yeah, I had a friend do that a couple years ago, so yep. I'm aware of that. So tell your friends. Well, well she just bought a new one. She's not ready to get rid of it. You got more friends than that. Come on, Steve. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the call. That uh, that does uh, lead me into saying, though, that the all that stuff is now set up on the GuruShow.com website. So. Yep, so now you can nominate someone or, uh, you know, yourself. Yep, uh, or you could donate the, your machine. Um, and also, you know, don't be afraid to nominate yourself. If you feel like you are in need, you know, go to the website and get, tell us your story, and you'll have just as much of a chance as anybody else. Right, because uh, everyone has an equal chance. Because, I mean, having a good story helps, but still the, the randomizer is pretty much picking. So <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's it's a really good uh, – I, I, this is one of my favorite times of year for that reason because everybody needs a computer nowadays. And, yeah, I know. mean, there's no way to – as we were talking about earlier, it's it's nearly impossible to not have – a computer. And a lot say. of times around this time of year, like even back in August, me and Howard at the shop, we're like looking at the machines that we have donated and we're like, oh, we can fix this one up, you know, right? this will be good. Yeah. And, and they'll be great. The, the it's, we're not going to, we really do our best to make sure that we don't hand you a machine that is terrible. 
right? It's the machines come in, they get new drives, they get RAM upgrades, they get a fresh install of the operating system. They're they're ready to go, and it's all you know, it's all you at that point. Yeah, I mean, we get a surprising amount of donations. Like it sometimes still surprises me, you know, how often we get a machine donated, and a lot of times people do say they're like, "This is for the giveaway." So. Yep. Unfortunately, some of those are uh, a little too antique. <laughs> like a 98 machine? Right. You know, Howard did take one of the, the old Windows 98 machines that we had, and he put it up front in the lobby, and it now runs like all the classic games. Right. So if you want to come play the original version of Doom. I've done that many times. Right. You can now uh, go over to the Fort Lowell office, and uh, you can. I'm sure Howard will happily let you come play Doom. He just hooked up a serial port joystick to it also. <laughs> it's, that thing is so cool. <laughs> It's very nostalgic. I, it, it reminded me so much of like, I mean, trying to find sound drivers for for that machine and like trying to get the sound to work on Doom. It was it was a flashback. Awesome. Yeah. So if you want to come play some old video games, come by the shop. You can while you're donating your computer. You can sit down in the lobby. Yep. Yep. There you go. Let's talk to Greg. Hey, Greg, how are you? I got a question, guys. Sure. Giving computers away, people do need computers. They're like the utilities now at this point. Um. Is there a computer out there that is designed for old folks, people that are illiterate, so to speak? Yeah, and there's actually several software add-ons for the interface to kind of simplify that process. Uh-huh. Uh, one of them has quite the name. It's called LD, E-L-D-Y, and mm-hmm. it's a dramatically simplified interface. Basically, you have like four or six icons, depending on the configuration, and one's like Internet, the other one's email, um, yeah, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, oh, that's great. And so there's a few add-ons that you can get, uh, to really simplify that process. If you want something it, super simple. It's a huge, I think it's a big problem. I mean, obviously the problem is diminishing as people die, but, uh, <laughs> that's well, one way to look at it. Well, the, the thing yeah, is, well, I mean, I'm, a, I'm at the era of, I, I'm, I could never figure out that clock on the VCR, but I'm semi-literate. On the computers, you know. Well, I'm they, thinking they that have to be. at least there will always be more old people, right? <laughs> they die off. There's always new ones coming up. We we hope so, yeah. So, um, but as the as the generation turns, it's going to be like you, you're not going to hear Glenn Miller in Green Valley. You're going to hear the Stones. <laughs> um, and, right. Yeah, but the technology is always moving forward too. So there's always going to be a certain amount of frustration with that. People are making it more friendly that. for for the making it more friendly for the non initiates. Yeah, well, ELD, huh? yep, ELDY. You can check that out. Um, they they offer a free version, and then there's also a, like a, a, a paid version, which has a couple of more features. Strictly uh, PC, or does it go to Apple too? Uh, it's PC only, as far as I know. Um, okay. There is a, a, a Linux version, so uh, of something like that. And I can't remember the name of it, but there's a similar uh, Linux software. So. In the event that they don't want to upgrade their hardware and they want to have older uh-huh. hardware that is a super simplified interface, then there is a, a Linux version also. It also keeps them yeah. from getting infections and clicking on the, um, you know, rescue the Nigerian prince <laughs> emails. Well, hardware is cheap nowadays, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, um, yeah, it is. Uh, the problem right now is that because of all the security updates that they've given to hardware, um, mm-hmm. which is a big reason the Windows 10 thing came about, was the whole UFI interface or the way that you can secure the machine physically. Um, it makes it so that installing certain types of add-ons or older pieces of software on new hardware is very difficult, or can mm-hmm. be anyway. So uh, if you have the opportunity to run older hardware with the Linux installs, you're in better shape. Hmm. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. You see you see the issue, I'm sure, all the time. Pretty much every day. People come in and- yeah, did you did you turn your computer back on and off that kind of stuff? All right. <laughs> well, luckily we managed to get that. You know, we've got most people trained, right? When the, yeah. when they yeah. call, they said I've already restarted the computer, Mike, and I'm like, good. So uh, yeah, but the LD interface is is very cool. Um, it, it has some limitations though. All right, so mm-hmm. if it, it uses its own built-in browser. So in the Uh, event that you're going to go to the Internet, it's sort of like the old AOL stuff where um, it had a a browser that was built in and it it interpreted the pages in its own way. And if you go to certain types of more complicated websites, it's going to have some problems displaying those. But uh, the upside is is that it takes all the text on the the screen, makes it larger, more readable, 
And yeah. uh, again, like I said, simplifies it down to a few buttons so you know how to get to whatever you're doing. All right. Do they have that for uh, iPads? Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think that because the, the whole Apple interface thing is is it's all a closed ecosystem. I know that yeah. for Android there are some uh, simplified interfaces. Right, and the, what was the, the phone system? The the, the uh, jitterbug, the jitterbug phones, right. or like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are some. There are ways that you can uh, simplify the iPad stuff natively. Right, you can go in there and yeah. turn on a bunch of accessibility features, makes everything larger, and then you just have somebody help you set it up so that you only have the things that you need uh, on the main screen. Makes things a lot easier. Now, the, my grandmother. And she was about 90-something. Uh, we had her using an older iPad, and she didn't have any problems with it. So Excellent. there's there's ways to to sort of, uh, you know, simplify that for your intended audience. There's got to be tutorials online for all this stuff. I yeah. Think, right? Yeah, I mean, that's how I figure it out, right? I go online and start reading about it. Um, and there's some good YouTube yeah. videos on that, on how to do some of those those things. If you go to the LD webpage, though, you can actually uh, view a demo of the software. It's pretty cool. Okay. Hey, thanks, guys. See all you. right. Appreciate the call, Greg. Bye. Thank you. You bet. Bye. You know what we're going to do right now, Kent? You know what we're doing. Hit play, man. Let's do it. All right. We're going to take a break. Give us a call, 790-2040, if you want to be part of the show. We'll be right back. Whether you're dealing with hardware installation or, heaven forbid, a virus, oh. Oh. Ah! Mike Swanson is answering all your questions one by one. So call in or chat in with yours. The website, gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is the Computer Guru Show on AM 1030, KVOY The Voice. I'm nerdy and the extreme and whiter than sour cream. I was in a V club and glee club and even the chess team. Only question I ever thought was hard. What do I like her or do I like Picard? Spend every weekend at the Renaissance Fair. Got my name on my underwear. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show, 790-2040 if you want to be part of the show here. My laptop has been on on noisy the whole time here. Oh, well, nothing happened. What's up with that? All right, uh, 790-2040 if you want to be part of the show. Comcast is uh, under fire for it, basically doing the same stuff that they always do, which is uh, you know reducing the security and privacy of their users. Uh, one, of, one of the ways that they do that, besides making it so that uh, you can't cancel their service, by the way, which I have new experience with, Oh, that's going to be an interesting phone call. I'm going to record it next time because I just I, I got angry and hung up. I was just like, I don't have time to deal with this, which is of course the plan because well, next time you gotta you gotta set aside you know a couple hours, get a bag of popcorn and a bottle of whiskey and just go to town. Right, and over, and I'll I'll make the call from the office so the whole call is recorded, and then we can uh, we can just put it up on the internet for everyone to listen to, which will be grand, and you you'll get to hear me do. Uh, uh, it doesn't happen really often, but uh, there's a few times in the office where I've had to make phone calls that are unpleasant, and uh, it's it's a very interesting experience to be on the other end of that, I'm sure, um, just because I, I get a little biting at times, a little, a little stabby uh, when it comes down to it. So uh, it'll it'll be a great conversation, and we'll just have some fun with the uh, with the Comcast people. But anyway, uh, what they're doing right now is they they do this thing called message injection, and it, basically they create pop ups whenever they feel like it on top of anything. So this is kind of like when you're at a hotel and you're using their Wi Fi, and you know that kind of thing happens where it gives you an ad. Right, or it gives you an ad, or some type of pop up. You know, they just they want you know they want to tell you something. And it's really important to see it. It's really important that you see whatever it is that Comcast is is popping up in front of you. And uh, they they first started using this for data cap stuff, right? Where they were like, "Hey, you've used X amount of your monthly percentage of internet that you're allowed to use," um, which I think maybe was good intentioned in some way, um, but. It, they now are doing it for all kinds of things, surveys or um, ads, 
that, that Comcast wants to inject on top of. You don't even have to have a browser open, right? It can just it can spawn one open on your computer. I mean, are they trying to give people more reasons to not use their service? Or well, is this more of a captive audience it, thing? Well, it's Comcast, captive audience. What are they going to do, switch to somebody else? I mean, CenturyLink is looking better and better. That's all <laughs> I can say. <laughs> Yeah, but the the what is the likelihood that people are going to change? That's the real. That's the sad thing. You know, we've talked about this before. Is like any time that there's a, like a public outcry against a company, you're looking at a percent of a percent of the market in most cases. Most people just don't care, or, or they don't really have a, a valid option, or they don't even know to care. No, no, that could be it. So uh, here's the problem that I see with it: is that it trains users. To click on pop-up ads. Yeah, we just got over this. Like, this is just stopping. Right. Uh, the pop-up ads are just recently dying. Yeah. And, and and Comcast wants to keep them alive and also train users, right, that it's okay to just click on those things to, you know, to either answer the question or whatever to, to make it go away. I mean, not only that, but, like, Comcast already can charge whatever they want because, like you said, they're a, it's a captive audience. Do they really need ad revenue on top of that? I don't know. According to them, they do, I guess. I wonder if uh, you remember that device we talked about, the pie hole that you can build into your network? I wonder if that would stop this. I don't know. It would be interesting to see if, if you can stop message injection with some type of a firewall. Do we know if this is only working for people who, is it just every Comcast customer, or is it people who use Comcast's specific DNS and don't use a different DNS? It happens at the modem, so it doesn't matter which it DNS doesn't matter, you're. yeah. Um, and I know because I get them... Uh, and I'm not using Comcast DNS because you should. We should try the pie hole out and then report back because since the pie hole is a device that sits between your modem and the rest of your network, I wonder if it would be able to filter that kind of stuff out. We'll have to look into that. Yeah. Put it on the list. We'll we'll check it out. It's uh, it's it's just it's Comcast being stupid again. I mean, it's stop it, Comcast. Come on, man. I mean, the thing is though, they don't have to stop it until they are forced to. You know, right. Well, and and you know this is the reason. When you hear these types of stories, it illustrates the reason why Comcast and Cox and all of the other cable companies that have these exclusive uh, geographical regions, why they are so opposed and put up such a fight to either municipal broadband or to some type of third party coming in like Google Fiber. I mean, at least with Cox, though, like they don't go as super villain as Comcast does. Right. My co- my Cox experience tends to be begrudgingly okay. Yeah. I, mean, I they still charge too much. Yeah, but they don't give me a reason to every day be like I hate this company. And, and the times that I have called them and said, "Hey, guess what? I need to cancel this account." Never argued with me. Not even once. They're like, "Okay, sorry to see you go. It'll be off on this date." Bam. They always give it. me the benefit of the doubt too. Like, you know, I'll have a security error on my network saying that, you know, torrenting was happening. Right. And they'll be like, "Did you have your Wi-Fi open?" And I was like, "I probably did." <laughs> You're right. I did. Now that I think about it, and we're it. not saying that that is at all untrue. We're I just uh, I'm terrible at did. keeping my Wi-Fi secure. I guess. Man, you should you should probably uh, work on that. I, I'll learn one day. I guess you someday know? you'll keep that open or close it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that they always they're like, surely you are not at fault, right? This must have been some type of a. You know what, the installer, when they put that yeah. in for you, they probably didn't secure it. It's just like when I forget probably. to pay and they're like, there was an error processing your payment. I'm like, no, there wasn't. <laughs> there was no payment to process. <laughs> the error is all mine, sir. The error is all mine. Yeah, I mean, Cox isn't terrible. Um, and, and the truth is is that uh, at, at both of the the main computer guru locations, right, they're both Cox Internet there. I mean, do well. we really have a choice? No. But not not a choice, at least for Fort Lowell, right? There is no reasonable choice for the amount of bandwidth that we consume. I wonder if it would be cheaper to get a bunch of Simply Bits lines and then just combine them all. No, I already looked into you that. You thought about that? Yeah, that would, <laughs> would not work. Um, yeah, that, that wouldn't work. But uh, it, it, as far as the, the cable Internet stuff is concerned, it's... You know, it's these guys that are looking out for their bottom line and not for the customer, and uh, which is their right to do, right? That's their businesses. But I think that once you start involving the, well, let's go ahead and set these sort of arbitrary geographical boundaries based off of we manage to 
convince a city council that we have some exclusive contracts, some exclusivity in this geographical area, then that's problematic. I think that if you're going to compete based on the service or the product that you have, you should com- be able to compete in an open, unfettered market, and uh, that you, you should be forced to to play in the same field as everyone else and hope that you win. If you don't, you don't. That's just how it works. Yeah, but not according to these guys. You know, they're going to rewrite the rules as much as they possibly can. They're gerrymandering my my internet. That's what they're doing. I mean, it kind of is. Yeah. It's the sad thing. <laughs> oh. All right, before I get on some sort of a rant, let's take a break. I'll be right back. Computer troubles? Need some advice? Call in now. Mike Swanson will be back after these messages. The Computer Guru Show, AM 1030, KBOY, The Voice. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at gurushow.com. This is the Computer Guru Show. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to help you out with the technology needs. For like nine more minutes. For like nine more minutes. You know what that means? We need to answer some phone calls here. Let's Stacking up. All right, which one's first, man? Line two. All right, let's go ahead and talk to Cynthia. Hello, Cynthia, how are you? Oh, I should have given a fake name. Well, you can, you can really still say it is fake. I'm about my question. I want to know if there's someone at your business who could teach me to use my Kindle Fire. Yes. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We could even teach you how to use real fire, not even just the Kindle one. <laughs> no, I, I got that master. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, yeah, bring it on down, and we'll, we'll happily give you lessons. All right, thank you. All right, thank you for Bye. the call. I appreciate it. She didn't have to admit that was her real name. She could have just said, this is my pseudonym. I am Cynthia today. It's definitely not my real name. This is definitely w- not my real name. wouldn't give my real name. Would not do it. Let's talk to Mark. Hello, Mark. How are you? Hey. Fine. Hey. So thanks for your good show. I'm glad you're evaluating the Pixel. And uh, had some comments or questions about it. Anyway, as you know, I got the, um, the Galaxy 7S, whatever, uh, S7. Right. And uh, the Edge. Anyway, um, I have a report to kind of make. I, when I was doing some watering in my orchard, I'm bending over. I have a way that I keep my phone clipped into my pocket in a very simple way. It okay. works pretty well. And uh, so I'm bending you're... over, doing some stuff, and it falls out into the muddy water <laughs> that I'm watering. Is this because I was giving you grief about the waterproof phone last, <laughs> last week? <laughs> so... And my first thought was, gee, I'm glad I have this and not the Pixel, because <laughs> it would have fried the Pixel, I'm, I'm thinking. So anyway. Um, and for, I have two two observations here. First, uh, the simple way that seems to work uh, for for securing your phone to your pocket obviously does not work. Right. <laughs> and the second one is, you got to get a case, man. It doesn't matter what kind of phone you've got. You I have the right case. case. I, have, I do have a case, and... Uh, so and that's you know that's how I I have one of those Tech Twenty One cases. Mike had the S Seven before he got the Pixel, and that thing was like a finger hazard because of all the cracks in the screen. Yeah, I had uh, I had shattered that phone. I broke oh, it. Oh wow! Well. Like okay. we were going into Best Buy to get a case for it, and he dropped it. <laughs> well, I, yeah. so anyway, I do have a, one of those Gorilla glass covers on it. Good. And uh, and a nice case, you know, the Tech Twenty One. It's like a wallet case kind of thing. Yeah. And um, and so you know, I wasn't worried about it shattering. I was worried about it, uh, you know, frying from being soaked in the water. Right, being wet, of course, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I'm glad that you have yourself a waterproof phone, there, Mark. So so anyway, you were right. I was wrong. I got the wrong phone. No, no, not not necessarily. <laughs> I'm interested in your future report. Uh, I did like the that it had a 240 frame per you know, second uh, option for its 
video. Well, I was I showing Rob some of the slow mo stuff. I it's did pretty cool. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, though, right now I am still a bigger fan of the S7 at the moment. Oh, you are. Yeah, well, can but you that's give some reasons. It's there's only one, and it's completely biased. I'm just a VR fan, and I think the Gear VR is better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, and then you wait until I, I get I my believe... headset. You wait. You wait. Yeah. I'll get the headset, and then we'll we'll, we'll try it out. You'll be daydreaming. Okay. And I'll be that's gearing right. up to win. <laughs> well, I think that the Galaxy will come out with something competitive with the Pixel as far as the, um, you know, the the voice interface. You think they're going to oh, explode back onto the market? Right. This is going to be a hot commodity. I think it's going to, you know, I think they're going to, everybody's going to try and copy each other to the best of their abilities. So. But it's time to get it's Samsung fired up for some competition here. <laughs> I hope yeah. they do, though. I hope they make a comeback because that was unfortunate. I still miss Sick the burn. Note 7. <laughs> yeah, I, if, if not for that one little flaw, the Note 7 would have been a really great phone. Just that one well, tiny little flaw. Well, it's a flaw that's flaw. common with all kinds of things that carry that kind of battery. Yeah, how many of them come in anything. five different boxes, though, to ship it back? That's what I, I will ask. say, though, that this was a good lesson for everybody who thinks that lithium batteries are not, you know, incredibly dangerous, and you got to be careful with them. Yep. Fire, man. Well, it's real. Yep, thanks. Yeah. Okay, thanks for your show. Hey, you know what they need to do? Amazon needs to, or the Kindle needs to come out with the Kindle Fire that actually catches fire. Right. right. Then uh, that would be awesome. Well, that's why when we were looking at the, the call list, it was all in capitals, and so I initially read it as Kindle Fire. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, what happened? <laughs> oh, poor thing. Must but, be a Samsung model. <laughs> Samsung started making the Kindles for a minute there. <laughs> oh, you know what we need to do? <clears throat> we need to talk about the wrap-up stuff. All of our little advertisements for Guru. Well, first of all, it's you know I told you Black Friday you know it isn't just today over at uh, Computer Guru we're doing a two week sale forty percent off labor if you come on in that includes training if you want to come in and get your Kindle Fire training. You know how I know we're doing a good sale? How's that? Because I go and I tell Howard about it and he goes, <sighs> Yeah, anytime Howard's like, oh man. <laughs> It, it really, I mean, as soon as we announced the sale, we had like a double of our normal intakes. That's the way it's supposed to work. So if you want to save a little bit of money over the holiday uh, the process here, all you got to do is say that you heard about the radio special or the Thanksgiving special, and uh, it's 40% off labor. Yes. You must mention it or you do not get the... It's really useful if you just got like a new Black Friday machine or something and you need your data transferred over. Right. Got to get it cleaned up, get the data transferred. All that bloatware off of it. Right, and then you can you can donate your old computer for the Christmas giveaway, because uh, every year, but all year actually, but this time of year we kind of push for it a little bit harder. Is if you bring in a uh, computer, uh, we will rehab it, we will find it a good home, and uh, we'll make sure that somebody who needs it has the ability to you know have a computer. That way, it doesn't end up in a junkyard somewhere. Right, or end up sitting in the closet. You know how many people have computers that are just sitting in the closet? They're like, I don't know, there might be something on there I need. Says the guy who like used a different laptop as a placeholder for his current laptop. Like, you just set your laptop on top of it. The thing is, I use them both. I, I use them both, right? It's besides, a placemat. You're, like, cutting a steak on your... Besides, I am the guru. I'm allowed to do this. Uh, so it, if, you, if you've got a computer that's just sitting in the closet and it's not terribly old, bring it by. We will rehab it. We'll get your old data off of it. We'll even give you your old hard drive back so that you have your data and you don't have to worry about anybody else having it. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that we right now are just $9 away on Patreon from hitting our first goal. So you guys should go to patreon.com slash guru show and donate a dollar. You can make me say something ridiculous or make Tara say something ridiculous. Right. You can't make me say something ridiculous for that price, though. And I think also because it's Patreon sponsored, I think we're going to make the, the Furby demolition a patron only thing. All right, so if you want to see exploding Furbies in slow motion... You'll uh, have to be a patron member. You will have to be a member of the Patreon family. I mean, since they're paying for it, it that seems fair. Uh, yeah, that does seem fair. Also, be sure to uh, give Rob a call during the week. Talk about your website. You, you want some better web presence? I'll, I'll tell you what, though. If you're going to call me on Monday, give me until like 10 o'clock, because it's a long weekend, you know? We had Thanksgiving off and stuff. We need to get a couple energy drinks in me first. I need, uh, I need you guys to call at 9 o'clock. 9.01. All right, uh, 9 o'clock, and uh, in fact, start calling at 8.30. <laughs> just to be sure. Just just to make sure that you really get Rob's attention. Becky's going to be like, there's a queue of callers for you? And they're like, oh, I'm sick today. I forgot. <laughs> I'm going home. Anyway, Rob can help you with your web presence. It can also in- help you integrate like your social media campaigns with your website to help you have better reach and uh, just a better web presence experience altogether. 
Also, uh, we've been dealing with a lot of security issues on websites recently. So if your website is, I don't know, what, three years old, it is it's probably unsafe. unsafe. And you uh, you should probably look at getting an update to that, and we can help you do that. You can give us a call down at the shop at 304-8300. Uh, website labor is not included in the sale, by the way, this week. I think we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna come up with with our own mm. web department sales. The web soon. department sale, okay. I will say also though that you guys should go subscribe to us on YouTube um, because every subscriber that we get there helps us create more cool stuff. It does, and we got some plans coming up here pretty soon that uh, it's all hush hush at the moment. But uh, the YouTube community, the the people who do watch us on YouTube, uh, and the, the people who listen to us live on air on the radio. Uh, there's going to be a convergence soon. So yeah. we want to make sure that uh, everybody has the opportunity and all the information to partake of the Computer Guru Show. Once again, thanks for listening. I want to thank uh, Perfection Auto Works for sponsoring the show, perfectionautoworks.com, and Desert Pro Commercial Cleaners. They're one of our Patreon sponsors that uh, meets the threshold to get mentioned on air every week. And you can, too. Just go ahead and sign up. Thanks for listening to the Computer Guru Show. We'll see you next week. <laughs>